The Singapore Strait is one of the busiest waterways in the world. Together with the Strait of Malacca, it is a maritime corridor of over 400 nautical miles in length. An estimated one-third of the world's traded goods pass through these waters annually, a figure which is expected to increase as the region's economies continue to grow. At its narrowest point, there are just three nautical miles between the shores of Singapore and Indonesia, while the navigable channel is reduced to less than two nautical miles. Safe Passage in the Singapore Strait is a set of two videos and an interactive training module. Together, they offer valuable information for experienced bridge teams, even if they have transited the strait before, and useful advice for those visiting for the first time. There are around 1,000 ship movements each day in the Singapore Strait. As a result, watchkeeping officers can find themselves having to deal with traffic situations involving a wide range of vessel types and sizes. This is especially challenging in poor visibility. So detailed voyage planning, good seamanship and situational awareness are essential to safe navigation. The hydrographic data is regularly checked, so when calculating safety factors on depth and contour settings, make sure you have the most recent updates. There are strong tidal streams in the strait, which must be remembered, as these can make a big difference when crossing lanes or picking up a pilot. The pilot boarding grounds for Singapore and Malaysia are all to the north of the TSS. Sambu, the pilot boarding ground for Indonesian ports, is to the south. Navigation in the strait can be demanding, so everyone needs to be properly rested at the start. Traffic movement is always changing. Watchkeeping officers need to know their ship's position and maintain good situational awareness so that they can make appropriate navigational choices. It's important to have the right level of bridge personnel. Always follow your company's SMS. All vessels must proceed with caution. They need to maintain a speed consistent with safe navigation. As always, keep to your company's SMS. But it is strongly recommended to have the engine room manned throughout the transit. In addition to following all applicable rules of the road, officers are well advised to take a look at Rule 10 concerning navigation in a TSS. Remember, being in a TSS does not give you the right of way, so use good seamanship. This could mean slowing down to help resolve a traffic situation, even when you have the right of way. Always maintain a safe distance from other vessels. Keep an eye out for the weather. Sudden thunderstorms with heavy rain can occur between June and August and October to December. The visibility can become moderate or poor very quickly. Haze can also reduce visibility. Shipmasters are advised to keep a proper lookout and navigate with caution. In addition to following all applicable rules of the road, ships shall comply in particular with rules 19, 20, and 35 concerning the conduct of vessels in restricted visibility, the exhibition of navigation lights, and the use of sound signals. In darkness, vessels crossing the TSS and all precautionary areas are requested and recommended to display a signal of three all-round green lights in a vertical line. This indicates the intention to cross to all nearby vessels. In the TSS, it's rarely possible to always keep strictly to the planned course line. Watchkeeping officers must be prepared to move to one side of the lane or the other to overtake or even when being overtaken. As well as the traffic in their immediate surroundings, they are advised to look well ahead to see what situations may be developing. 
information on other vessels' intentions may be requested from the VTIS. The Singapore VTIS operates 24 hours a day. It is an advisory service and covers the three straight reporting sectors 7, 8 and 9, known as straight rep. Reporting to it is mandatory when going into a new sector. It's good practice to inform the VTIS of your intentions at that time. There are teams of operators for each of the straight rep sectors. Mariners are recommended to follow the advice of the VTIS whenever possible because the operators can have a better understanding of the traffic movements over a wider area. But remember that following navigational advice given to you by the VTIS does not give you the right of way. The bridge team alone is responsible for the safe navigation of the vessel. Going west, you will enter the TSS in its far eastern section, Sector 9. You may notice dense traffic approaching the outer limits of the TSS. It comes from north, south and east, so you must exercise caution. As you pass the Horsba light, it's mandatory to report in to VTIS on VHF Channel 10. If you are transiting, you will be asked for information, including your destination and whether you are carrying any dangerous goods. If you are, they will ask for details of IMO class and weights. You will not have to give this information again during your transit as the VTIS pass it on from sector to sector. If you are going into the port of Singapore, they will already have this information in the pre-arrival notification. There are four precautionary areas in the Singapore Strait where you may encounter a high density of crossing traffic. Westbound, the first precautionary area takes up about half of Sector 9. It can be very busy with crossing traffic, especially near the entrance of the East Johor Strait. But usually, there is sufficient sea room to deal with any situations arising. There may be many tugs and tows, but mostly in daylight hours, starting at around 6.30. You will see fast ferries crossing throughout the strait. They rarely cause problems, but you must keep a proper lookout for any risk of collision. As you approach the pilot boarding grounds to the north of the lane, beware of vessels picking up or dropping off a pilot for both Singapore and the Malaysian ports. This may involve sudden large changes in speed. Checking the AIS information of nearby vessels may warn of their intentions, but never rely solely on AIS for collision avoidance. Remember that not all ships are fitted with AIS, and even if they are, it may be switched off, or the information provided may be incomplete or incorrect. Also, avoid using VHF for collision avoidance. This can lead to confusion and hinder transmission of important VTIS information. Always comply with the call rigs. Never become complacent. Always keep your eyes open. Avoid making a guess at a nearby ship's intentions. On leaving the first precautionary area, Check your position to be certain that you are still in the westbound lane. When entering Sector 8, reporting is mandatory to the VTIS on VHF Channel 14. Sector 8 is the narrowest in the strait. It is probably the most demanding area for watchkeeping officers. To the north, are anchorages used for bunkering and picking up stores. There are five pilot boarding grounds to the north of Sector 8. Be aware that eastbound vessels will start crossing to reach them. If you are going into the port of Singapore, make sure your own pilot boarding ground is in your AIS as your destination. The movement of Singapore pilots is managed from a central control room where everything possible is done to ensure that pilots get to their booked ETA 
on time. It is a separate organization from the VTIS. A tracking system means that delays are very rare, but with over 500 pilot assignments per day, delays do sometimes happen. You must contact the pilot service two hours before your ETA to confirm the booking on VHF Channel 20. You can expect to find vessels waiting near the boarding grounds, especially around the eastern boarding grounds Charlie and Bravo. Vessels are advised to calculate and adjust their speeds in the hours before arrival to avoid having to wait near a boarding ground and cause congestion. When approaching the boarding grounds, it is strongly recommended that they should do so at a safe speed, following all applicable rules of the road. In particular, the separation distance and factors listed in Rule 6, such as the state of visibility, available sea room and traffic density, among others. Only one vessel will be scheduled to arrive at Bravo and Charlie at any one time, and the next vessel will be scheduled at an interval of not less than 15 minutes later. Vessels arriving too early may have to wait, maintaining a minimum separation distance of one nautical mile from the vessel ahead. Information on vessels proceeding to these boarding grounds will be provided by the VTIS. Westbound vessels should approach their boarding ground on the starboard side of the channel. Some of the boarding grounds are close to anchorages, so approach these at a safe speed, keeping a safe distance from the vessels in the anchorage. Allow enough time and sea room when picking up a pilot. On larger vessels, it may take 10 minutes for the pilot to board, the reach the bridge, and finish the master pilot exchange. So ensure that there is sufficient time for that to be completed safely. The boarding arrangements must exactly follow international standards. The pilot's safety is the first concern. There are two precautionary areas in Sector 8 where many vessels leaving port are expected to cross the traffic lane. Pilot Eastern Boarding Ground Alpha is mostly used by container vessels for picking up pilots or as directed by the port master. Further west is the Pilot Southern Boarding Ground, used by passenger ships or as directed by the port master. In this area, there are many ships dropping off pilots. In particular, container ships from terminals such as Pasipanjang. As they have the right of way, they come straight into the TSS, heading for the eastbound or westbound traffic lane. At night, these vessels may be obscured by the background lights of Singapore. Pay attention to the VHF to hear VTIS traffic information about nearby vessels. There may be a lot of crossing traffic including ferries and tugs with barges, especially soon after dawn. Carefully assess the situation before you overtake. Immediately after the entrance to the Jong Fairway, note the slight course alteration to port. Distant oncoming traffic in the eastbound lane may seem to be intending to cross ahead of own ship, but they will alter course to starboard as they approach. Also, be aware that VLCCs in the eastbound lane may cross the westbound lane here, heading for the Shell Single Bowie Mooring to the north of the TSS. Fishing boats can be found throughout the strait, especially soon after dawn. Their movements can be unpredictable. These small boats are not visible on radar. They may not be displaying the correct lights and shapes. Report in to VTIS on VHF Channel 73 as you enter Sector 7. The westbound lane of the TSS is wider than in Sector 8, so generally the traffic is light. There's a wheelover position immediately inside Sector 7, near the Raffles Lighthouse. Beware of converging traffic and ensure you start early enough 
as there is shallow water outside the channel. There are two pilot boarding grounds at the western port limit of Singapore, Alpha and Bravo. There is also one in Malaysian waters, Tanjung Palapas. Look out for crossing traffic and vessels slowing down to pick up pilots. The area adjacent to Western Pilot Boarding Ground Alpha is often busy with ship-to-ship -ship transfers and vessels at anchor. There is a final precautionary area which may have crossing traffic entering and leaving the West Johor Strait. If you are going to the port of Tanjung Palapas, their pilot center is on VHF Channel 64. You are leaving Sector 7, report to Channel 88. Have a good watch. VTI's West, out. Once you leave Sector 7 and enter Sector 6, please inform the Singapore VTIS that you have completed your transit and report to Johor VTS on Channel 88. You are now in the Malacca Strait. Detailed voyage planning, good seamanship, and situational awareness are essential to safe navigation in the strait. Make sure your bridge is adequately manned as specified by your SMS. Maintain good communication with the VTIS throughout your transit. We hope you found this video helpful. Have a safe passage.